It's one thing for hockey fans to hear January 1, a ballpark date. It's another thing to start to hear these kind of details. How realistic are these things that we're hearing? What kind of hurdles lie between us and January 1 or whenever play resumes? Tony, I think we're going to find out the answer to those questions over the next two weeks. I think the League and the Players Association are really going to grind away between now and the end of November to try to see, you know, how quickly the league can get started and what exactly it is going to look like. And, you know, initially when there were reports yesterday about the memo that the Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly sent out to the teams, there were some reports that we could have a proposal for the Board of Governors tomorrow at their meeting. I think that's unlikely. It might be too soon, but I would expect they're going to get updated on the kinds of things that are being discussed. And I, and I think that if you do want to start on January 1st, and I think we'd all like to see the possibility of that, you really know you have to sort it out over the next couple of weeks. So I, I think we're going to see um, a real grind away attempt at trying to get this done, trying to finalize something, and hopefully seeing. I do think when the league says they want to start January 1st, I believe they're serious, and this is why. If you look at what happened in Major League Baseball, you learn that when you're not playing in a hub, and we've seen it with the NFL too, you're going to have speed bumps, cancellations, and things that happen that are out of your control. You mean a bubble. The, a bu yeah, when you're out of the bubble. Yeah. When you're out of the bubble. Right. Yeah. So what your best option is to start as early as you can and adjust on the fly. Okay. That's what MLB did, and that's what the NFL is doing. And I think that's what the NHL looks like. If they're going to have to start, start as early as possible, adjust on the fly, deal with what you have to deal with. And I think that one of the things they're looking at for the schedule is keeping a week or two open at the end of the regular season. So if you have to make up games, you can do it then. So that's why when they say they want to start January 1st, I believe it. I don't know if it's going to be possible, but I think they're going to try. All right, Elliot, I'll do some quick math for you. They want to be done by July 15th. Two months for playoffs means May 15th. Two weeks for a buffer at the end means the regular season's over May 1st. If we can start at the earliest on January 1st, four months. How many games are they thinking about cramming into those four months? Uh, we've seen as low as 48 previously from the NHL. Could it be more than that if they're able to start on January 1? Uh, Mike, first of all, the one thing about the two-week buffer zone at the end is that you know you can move up the playoffs if you don't right. need to use it. So we'll see. But uh, the numbers I have heard, Mike, are between 56 and 72. Um, you know, I, I know 48 is a number that's kind of been thrown out there in the public sphere. I didn't speak to anybody who told me 48. Now, that doesn't mean it's not on the radar. I think if we have to move back, uh, then we could see 48. But most people I talked to in the last few days told me somewhere between 56 and 72. And we'll see. And the other thing that's going to be matter here, Mike, is, you know, what's the schedule going to look like? How many games in a week are the players willing to play? These are the, are we going to be in hubs or not? And I get the sense, Mike, there's a growing sense from teams. They want to play in their own buildings. Now, right now, there's a few teams, not a lot, but a few that are concerned that they won't be able to use their own buildings right now because of government regulations. But who knows where we're going to be in a month. Um, that's why I think the commissioner talked about the hybrid idea. But more and more teams, from what I understand, want to use their own buildings. So I heard between 56 and 72, although that obviously can change. All right, Elliot, I thought you were going to touch on the things the players cared about. You left out the most obvious one. How much are they going to get paid? And we've talked yes. about... Just for people to remember, right now the current CBA is if you make a million dollars, there's going to be a 10% deferral. So now you're down to 900,000. There's going to be a 20% escrow. You're down to 720. So 72% yeah. of the contract. I think the players thought no matter how many games they're getting 72%, I think the owners think it's probably going to be some sort of prorated version of 72 cents on the dollar. That seems to be the launching point to any conversation of number of games and bubbles and everything else. Where are they in that conversation? Well, Mike, I left that for you because you're an ex-player, and so you want to ask it. <laughs> and secondly, that. you know, as a college guy, you're good at math because most people say it's 70 percent, and I was one of those. But no, if you do the math properly, like you just did, it's 72. So you're right. The players have taken a hard line. They have said that we signed a deal that said we get 72 percent of our gross pay, and we believe that's the case whether there's 
one game or 72 games. Um, I believe there are owners uh, who have said that, you know, we have to prorate. And I think one of the reasons that 72 games potentially is an option is the more games, the better. And number two, that is also closer to 82. Look, I I think both sides are aware there's going to be a conversation about this. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't think it's easy necessarily, but I think that, look, I think the players want to play. I think the commissioner wants to play. I think the goal is to find a way to get them to play. So there's going to be a conversation about this. I don't necessarily think it's going to be easy, but I think there will be an attempt to find solutions so that everybody can look at here and say, all right, we're satisfied with compromise. what comes up, yeah. but there's going to be a compromise here, I would think. Elliot, if you saw the movie Hidden Figures, I can tell you there's a room full of people that check all of this math, and it's always right. <laughs> Unbelievable. Here's what I want to ask you. Based on what Mike Johnson was talking about yesterday in terms of teams still having to make deals and make moves, the Tampa Bay Lightning, the reigning champs come to mind. Certainly, mm-hmm. Mikhail Sergachev comes to mind. If you're going to start playing January 1, there's something like impetus, something like urgency. How does that get impacted by what we're now talking about as it starts to feel more real that January 1 is a feasible start date? Oh, I think it's a big deal, Tony. One of my favorite Twitter followers is a, is a football guy, a former executive and agent by the name of Andrew Brandt. And he has a saying, the deadline spur action. And I think the league is in a little bit of a holding pattern right now. And think of teams like Tampa Bay, teams like the New York Islanders, they know they can go 10% over the cap until the drop of the puck. And once we get a deadline, a date, uh, things are going to change. And not only for, I think, the teams that have some cap issues to figure out, but also players like Mike Hoffman, players like Michael Grandlin, uh, players like Eric Halla. Those players are going to go in and find work and, and decide which teams they're going to play for. I think some of those teams have back, players have backed away a bit because the deals haven't been what they like, and they're waiting to see what else happens. So they're going to find out, A, who's serious about getting them, and B, will the offers get any better? So I do think that once we have a stake in the ground and we have a specific target date, I think you're going to see a lot of more activity in terms of teams trying to reach the cap and some players saying, okay, now I've got to decide where I want to play because I decided to wait a little bit longer since I didn't like the way the market was shaping up. Elliot Friedman, as always, great stuff from you. Thanks so much.